Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of the Capture 3D multi-part webinar series. Before we start, I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and joining us on our one-hour webinar with a live Q&A session. Just a quick intro, my name is Sonia Jones and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Today, the topic is going to be automated 3D scanning technology for product development and manufacturing. For those that didn't attend our first webinar, we discussed about the uh, 3D scanning, its benefits, how companies are utilizing it for um, real world applications, how important the uh, accurate 3D data is, and we, and we also covered the differences between the data accuracy, data resolution, um, data quality, and repeatability. So when we talk about repeatability, we also talk about automation, of course, right? So we took a sneak peek into the uh, how companies are automating their processes in the previous webinar. So today we're going to dive deeper into the automation topic. I'd like to remind you all that we have more webinars coming up and here's the list of the uh, topics we'll be covering in this series. We'll be sending out an email or um, blast but please uh, make sure to check out our social, social media channels because we'll be posting updates on them. We also have a free GOM Inspect software training course happening next week, and we already have over 150 registrants. So it's completely free to attend. So please make sure to register as the seats are gonna be full. And if you have any questions uh, during this presentation for our speakers, please leave them in the Q&A chat box and we'll address them during the uh, Q&A at the end. I'd like to introduce your panels for today. I'm Sonia, your host for the webinar, and I'm an event manager at Capture 3D. I've been with the company for four years. Uh, as for the speakers, we have Staten, who's our Northwest sales manager. He has an engineering degree. Uh, he's been with the Capture 3D for four years as well. We also have Brett Schmidt, who's our application engineer. He has an aerospace engineering degree and he has been with us for three years now. All right, so we are really, really excited to share this technology with you and we appreciate you all tuning in today. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Staten. Hey, thank you, Sonia. Um, again, to reiterate, thank you guys and girls and women, ladies, boys, whoever else for attending today. I do appreciate it. Um, Again, one more time, if there are questions, please do put them in so we can get to them in the Q&A session. So as a quick agenda, today we're gonna to go over Capture 3D, kind of who we are, manufacturing industry trends, AKA Industry 4.0, why do companies adopt automation? The types of automated 3D measurement technology that's used right now, examples of companies automating their processes and the results that they've seen using this kind of technology. We're also gonna have a live demonstration from Brett out of California of the VMR and some of our automation features. We'll roll into a conclusion and then a live Q&A. So Capture 3D is the US partner for GOMS 3D measurement solutions for over 22 years now. Started in 1997, uh, we have locations in California, Connecticut, Michigan, North Carolina, and Washington. We've got about 100 team members and growing. We've doubled in size in the past three years that I've been here. We also have 2,600 system installs in the US. There are over 17,000 GOM systems installed worldwide with a large concentration in Europe, which makes sense because GOM is headquartered in Braunschweig, Germany. GOM was privately owned until May of 2019 in which we were acquired by Zeiss. So both Capture 3D and GOM are excited about, about that acquisition and working with Zeiss in the future. Full field data is now being used in the aerospace, power gen, automotive industries due to its ability to quickly measure and inspect components with more organic shapes, such as airfoils and sheet metal parts. But we're also seeing an increased adaptation of the technology in other areas of manufacturing as well, such as consumer goods and medical devices. Data and data analytics are a huge part of the foundation of Industry 4.0, which we're going to talk about shortly, just like our technology plays into that. I think it's safe to say that most of us have heard of Industry 4.0, at least over the past few years. There's a lot of buzzwords surrounding it. We see IoT, the Internet of Things, or iOS, Internet of Systems. Uh, one we're seeing often, too, is the combination of cyber-physical systems. Which all sounds cool, but in reality, for those who haven't heard it and haven't heard a lot about it or understand it or know much about it, it's the fourth industrial revolution, which really in short means that we, what we know is traditional manufacturing and industrial manufacturing practices 
We're taking that and combining it with new and upcoming smart technologies. The goal of that being to create a type of factory where the entire system can communicate and become intelligent. So when we're looking at things like cycle time or waste, bottlenecks in our production systems or downtime in our production systems, now we know it when it happens. We can kind of predict it and we can work on preventative measures for that, whether it's a PMS system or anything else. The goal for this in the future for Industry 4.0 is to create that entire system but to have it be intelligent in a way so we can predict when things are going to go down ahead of time and stop it. In order to do that, we need a significant amount of data. So for an example, with our systems and measurement, look at a CMM. So if we have a part we want to look at for flatness on the surface, or look at what a flat surface, what we perceive to be flat, is doing. So you may able to touch it, let's say, five, six times. We've got five or six really accurate points of data, and we can get a relatively good idea of what's going on with that surface, depending on the part size. Now if you look at ATOS, we take a couple scans of this, and now we've got five to 6,000 or 50 to 60,000 points across this same surface. It's the same one that was measured by a CMM. We just have a vast amount of data on it now, which will allow us to really see what's going on in that versus just a few points on it. 4.0 is the same way with a factory. Instead of just having a few pieces of information around the factory, we want to build an entire picture of it. And ATOS can help you do that. So looking at automation, why would you automate your process? What's going to drive a company or a customer like yourself to go, well, I've got a manual system. What's going to make me move to the next step? <clears throat> so first, we're going to look at some of the benefits of automated production processes. So one of the first ones is reduction of manufacturing cost and waste. Improved product quality, increased labor productivity and production efficiency, improved worker and workplace safety, throughput and repeatability. Reduce manufacturing cost and waste. So return on investment via the quality of the part and process control outweigh the initial cost substantially for any one of these systems that you would look at investing in. Robotic and automation systems work longer and faster, which increases the production rate and decreases part cycle time. Uh, this translates to reduced total lead time in which turn means more parts to the market and less scrap. With the inspection being automated, solving internal quality issues faster frees up time for your team to focus on other projects. Process control can be reached much faster and far more stability, allowing your parts to be manufactured with the exact same specifications, but with far lower tolerances, creating a more consistent product over the life. This also ties into increased efficiency and labor pro productivity. So I just mentioned freeing up team members, right? Automating the, by automating the inspection process. So if you look at these two graphs, numbers don't lie on it. The first graph here shows the increase in labor productivity over the past 10 years, while the second graph shows the increase in automation sales over 10 years. When looking at both of these in comparison with each other, we can see a correlation in the labor force pro productivity as the increase of automation sales go up. Also, it ties into improved workplace, worker and workplace safety. So the safety and well-being of workers is a goal for every facility and every manufacturer. By automating a given set of operations and transferring the worker from an active participation in the process to a supervisory role, the work is made safer now and they're freed up to be more productive, which we saw on the last slide. Reduction of workplace occupational injuries also shares a correlation with the implementation of automation. Increased throughput and reliability. Using an automated inspection process will yield increased repeatability while keeping your process under control, which is extremely important, and that's going to, in turn, mean more parts of higher quality reaching your customer faster. So here's an example of ADAC Automotive. This is a really good customer of ours. Um, they are located in Michigan, and they are a Tier 1 plastic injection mold company with eight locations across Michigan. They produced over 80 million vehicle-ready components in 2019, and they produce parts for about every OEM. We've got a list up there at the top that you can see. Their first system that they got, they were only scanning about 378 parts or so in the first year. If we fast forward to now, we're looking at a total of five manual systems they've invested in, three semi-automated rotary stages, a scan box 5120, a scan, two scan box 4105s, both with capsules. All of these operations are now load and go for in-process inspection and batch scanning, and they are scanning thousands and thousands of parts. So before we start talking about the types of automation that we provide, being semi-automation, standard automation, and custom automation, one of the important things to understand is what's going on in that process, which all goes down to the scanning part, right? That's what we do, that's what we're good at, and that's what we understand. And there's three basic steps, be it either manual or automated scanning, or automated scanning process that have to happen. Step one is going to be your data acquisition. This is the activity of scanning the part 
and acquiring that data, the same as a CMM would touch it, but with an ex far, far, far more data. The next step is going to be the evaluation and the inspection. Now that we've acquired this data, we're going to line it up in space, apply the datums, and then move whatever GD and T or callouts are required for that parts inspection. Once that's completed, we're going to move to an inspection report and slash inspection table. This can be done a few different ways. It can be basic as a quick report that you're looking at as the user, just about your parts quality for rework, or it can go to a full production process where we're talking about we've got a system, it gets loaded up into Oracle and disseminates both into the end user customer, but both back internally with color maps so they can review their part quality. Going back to automation, the three types that we provide at Capture 3D and GOM, semi-automation, standard automation, and custom automation. Before we go into that a little bit, just for an idea, we understand that every application and every process is a little bit different. Not every customer, not every application requires a scan box. We understand that, it's totally fair. So with that in mind, just a quick overview of the systems we have available for manual use and even really kind of the base end of automation. We've got some small stuff with a tripod with a simple Lazy Susan, up to desk-mounted systems, and then semi-automated stuff, which we'll go into in the next slide. We also have a few pictures here of manual systems just on a stand. The first level of automation and our semi-automated solution is going to be a rotary stage. And this kind of goes into where people think automation, well, I need a robot, I've got to have safety, I've got to have laser systems, whatever it may be, six sensors. That's not necessarily the case. Automation is just that. You're automating a task. So instead of manually rotating a table, this is an automated stage that rotates by itself. So this is called the ROT 350. The ROT 350 is a plug-and-play solution that we use. So if you have a manual setup and you're looking for just a little bit more increased throughput, so where you're not having to articulate your scanner manually as much, or the part itself or the Lazy Susan, this is a great option for you. It interfaces in the software very simply, plug and play, move on to the next task. The next one we roll into is the GOM Scan Cobot. So this is a really quick video of it that we've got playing right now, and this is a great introductory way to step into automating your scanning and inspection processes. It's a very small system, it's portable, it can be rolled with one person, either into your quality area or if you need to move it to another part of your facility. One of the great things about it too, aside from its size, is it's a cobot, so everything on there is safe. You're not looking at sensors, you don't have to worry about anyone being injured. You also have the ability to access our VMR, which we're going to go into in a little bit further, which is our virtual measuring room, which is how we program all of our automation. And it's an extremely powerful tool. So instead of moving everything around by hand, we're doing that within the software. It almost looks kind of like a video game. There's an example of the VMR right now on the screen. So moving on to the next stage of this, we're going to look at getting started with automation into fully automated solutions. So we've discussed the scan code a little bit. We've also looked at the 4105. Now we've got all these other ones on here. And the important thing to remember about this is they're all doing the same thing. We're looking for high quality data and inspecting a part as fast as possible without compromising any of your results. So the only difference in any of these cells is going to be the size of the part and your application. If you've got a body in white, you're going to want to use a Series 8. If you're using small injection molded parts, you probably can go with a 4105 or a Cobot. One thing to take note of is the, the naming configuration. So 4105, 5108, 5120, et cetera, et cetera. 4105, the last numbers on there, that's indicative of the field or the, the size of the part you can put in there. It's working volume. So the largest part you can put in a 4105 is 500 millimeters. 5108, 800 millimeters. 5120, 2 meters. 6130, 3 meters. 6135, 3.5 meters. So on and so forth. I think you get the idea. One thing to think about, too, is we have all this standard automation we do also have the ability to do custom automation in project cells. We don't do a lot of them, primarily because for 99% of the applications we have, there's a cell that we have that'll fit it, and it works perfectly for the customer. We can even modify our standard cells slightly, but just keep in mind we do have a fantastic automation team that if you do need to automate something and it doesn't fit in a scan box or a scan box doesn't fit within your process, excuse me, we have the ability to do that. One of the advantages of talking about standard automation is the ability for it to be just that. It's standardized. And so once something is standardized, it comes with a set of advantages. You've got a turnkey product and solution. This has been proven and optimized. We've got this down to a system. It can be implemented quickly. It can be ordered quickly. We're not looking at a bunch of extensive engineering effort. We know how it works. And there's less parties involved. Something else that's great is ease and fast support. So if things go wrong, we know what it is. We're not troubleshooting with a system that's customized, which is fine. But for production environments, a lot of time, if something goes down, we need to be able to fix that quickly for our customers to keep them up and running. So in the scan box itself, 
looking at it more specifically and not just standardized automation solutions in general, what's really unique about it is this is a fully automated measuring, inspection, and reporting system. We're one software, one hardware from the same place. We're not trying to mingle different parts. This is all from the same manufacturer and it gets installed by the same people. We have a flexibility of regarding parts or your measuring parts. So again, this is all based off of size. If we have a small part, we've got a solution for it. If you have a large part, we've got a large solution for it. High speed and throughput, that's all there and given. We understand that's the goal. So three of the other things that are really important that Brett's going to get into in a little bit are the VMR virtual measuring room, which I brought into or I brought up a little bit ago, the auto teaching functionality, which is in that, and also our, also our kiosk interface. Um, again, not going to go too much into that, but please stay tuned a little bit longer when we go through it because it's a, it's a really powerful, powerful tool. Um, also, this is, a, again, complete single source solution, which I can't stress that enough, especially from the manufacturing side. Having one team to be able to do everything you need in your inspection cell on the automation side, it's, it's second to none. So talking about increased throughput with an ATOS scan box. This is an example of a structural casting company that we work through. It's an aerospace company. Um, and this particular part is a, is a very large stator. It's almost three meters OD or, or outer diameter. So the initial time on this, and, and mind you, this part has about 30,000 inspection points, it was about 20 to 30 hours when we started working on this project. After a few years and a few iterations, both on the hardware and software side with GOEM and us, we've got this process down for each one of these parts to 45 minutes. And they're running multiple of these 365, 24-7. Another example on a totally different uh, field in, in the industry is medical. So we have a medical manufacturer that we work with which makes castings that for your body. So we're talking about hip implants, knee implants, joints, elbows, shoulders, things like that. This particular part is a specific type of hip implant. The initial operations for these, and they are 100% inspection, every single one of them, so they all have to go through this process. The initial time on that is eight hours for one part. With the implementation of a 5108 and an ATOS 5, batch scanning and kiosk mode, which we're going to touch on in a little bit, we've now got the ability to scan eight of these parts simultaneously in under 50 minutes, which is a pretty drastic increase. The 4105, which we touched on with ADAC, this is just a kind of a closer up picture so you can get a better idea of it <clears throat> before we go into another application. So this pharmaceutical company specializes in the R&D and production of an inhalation equipment for asthma. They also manufacture a few other uh, items, but this specific application was for this. They started with a tilt and swivel and a core um, in 2015. Really liked the, the results of it. We were able to move faster with that than their CMM, but wanted to look at how they could get more throughput. So in 2017, they added ATOS Scanbox 4105. So if you look down at the chart on the bottom, the first part on a uh, tilt and swivel with the Core 80 was 25 minutes. Then we got that reduced down to uh, 10 minutes. The second part at 75 minutes, we got that reduced to 20 minutes. Something that's interesting too is, and to think about when you're looking at these applications, even if it's not an automated system, this is something I like to stress to my customers a lot. You've got a really powerful tool that can be used for a lot of things. It doesn't have to be just for the one application you buy it for. Utilize it for everything that you can. So be it first article inspection, series inspection, planning and accrediting, uh, if you're looking to do gauge r and correlation studies, virtual assemblies, full dimensional inspection, which is a given, reports, and also trend analysis, a really, really powerful tool. The 5108, um, we're sizing up a little bit, 800 millimeter part uh, uh, envelope, Component weighed up to 300 kilograms. Um, this is a really good example for customers looking into this and they're weighing in other technologies. So Bromford looked at a bunch of different technologies as well. They did benchmarking with this with a CMM, using probes, ruby tips. They used Pharaohs, Roamers, different white light sources, and Gomes blue light technology. They had a manual system and they decided to add a 5108 to complement the process in their CMM inspection. By the time we had done this study, 50 parts had been programmed. The average scan time per part was about 13 minutes. Average savings for one of these, 37 minutes a part. And if you're looking in comparison to CMM inspection times, this gives us higher repeatability and accuracy, and you're programming these parts one time. After that, your cycle time is just data collection. The first part, when you're looking at manual inspection, 60 minutes. On a CMM, 32 minutes. On a scan box, 13 minutes. The second one, manual, 210. CMM, 300 and scan box 25 minutes. With the 5108 in mind, something else to take a look at as far as if we're looking for throughput, repeatability, and faster cycle times and process times overall, this is the BPS, a so batch processing system. It does exactly what it says it does. 
This is a way that we can process large batches of parts at a time versus just on one fixture. This cabinet, which you see to the right, can be loaded up completely, and it's all set up with pneumatics to transfer the part loading and unloading into the 5108. So if you look at this as a shift operation, you're making X amount of parts to each shift, and they need to get expected at the, it, inspected at the end of it. Excuse me. You take it, load it with your parts. <clears throat> Operator programs in and says, hey, this is part number, whatever it may be. Each one of these are tracked with an RFID. They hit go, leave for their shift to work on whatever else. The next shift comes around. The next operator will come in. That entire cabinet's already been completely inspected, and all the reports are ready to go. They can simply remove those parts, load them up with the next one, and rinse and repeat. This is a great way, too, if you're looking at trend. So if you're trying to look how parts um, are wearing or if there's an issue with something downstream and you're seeing it in your part, you can load all these up and have an instant way to look at every one of these parts and how it's been trending and what's been moving and how your part's behaving. Uh, this is moving into a 6130 again, just to reiterate. We're doing the same thing here. The cells are just getting larger. This is a good example as to how much ATOS and scanning can grow within a company. They looked at getting a system, and they wanted to find a mobile one, and some of the requirements were full surface measurements, so full field data capability, and it also needed to be mobile and portable, and it needed to be fast. They purchased a manual system to replace their tactile technology and really enjoyed what they saw. They bought an initial scan box 6130 in-house, and they cut their tactile measuring times by 50%. With process improvement, this was enough justification for them to put these systems in facilities in Germany, Poland, Spain, Hungary. So that's a pretty rapid growth for just one type of cell. This is a series seven and eight. I'm not going to get too in depth on Opal. I really just this is just a good one we feel to show just to show you the size and scale of systems that we can get. To have a system like this, that's an inspection system that's this size and this is off the shelf, is incredible. And there's there's no one else doing anything like it right now. Um, all the big three, as far as automotive goes, here and in Europe, everyone's using these. Um, we took times on body and whites, which are taking hours and hours and hours, and we've got those down to about 30 minutes and less. Tying kind of all this together, right? We've talked about semi-automated solution. We've talked about custom solutions, project cells, and our standard off-the-shelf. So this is a great example that VW, who's a really great partner with GOM, decided to, to let us use and, and bring us in. So this is their measuring room of the future, as they call it. So in this room alone, there are 20 different GOM systems, and it's a really great example of how we've got standardized cells working along of huge project cells working alongside of um, manual systems. This at the time, we're looking at more of like a project cell, but this is also similar to what a Series A would do. But a cool thing to think about is if you have something that's larger than a body in white, we have the capability to measure that if it's a barrel, whether it's an aircraft wing we can come up with a solution that will work for you on those kind of applications. So you're seeing project cells, and then we've got two 6130s, which are standard off-the-shelf solutions. So again, just a great example of being able to look at the variation, even though it's a standardized solution. So the next thing we're going to look at is some of the software automation features. This is quite possibly one of the most powerful functions and one of my personal favorite that the GOM software has. It's the VMR virtual measuring room, which I've hit on a few times in here. VMR on auto teaching can drastically re reduce your part programming time. In fact, I would almost guarantee it if you're coming from a background where you're programming with a pendant or you're programming with something like ladder logic or even CMM programming. To have a system that can program itself, so to speak, off of CAD is huge. One, not, for, not just for your programming and process time, but two, for your user. It can be really intimidating for a user to come into a facility or if a new piece of equipment gets purchased on capital, for them to go, hey, you've got to use this, and you're looking at this crazy part, new system, knowing that you've got a program with a pendant. All that's gone. Everything's programmed inside of the software. So um, without further ado, I'm going to bring Brett in. He is one of our application engineers out of California, and he is going to go through and give you a software demo and show you kind of how the VMR works in first person. Hi, everyone and thanks for joining us today and welcome to the demonstration portion of today's automation webinar. I will be walking you through how to program a part inside the virtual measuring room and then we will take a look at an actual scan box executed in real time and then discuss kiosk mode and how it can be used to streamline your automation processes. So the virtual measuring room or VMR is what we're looking at right now the designated workspace inside the ATOS software, a virtual representation of a real scan box. It allows you to manipulate, maneuver, and generate a scanning pathway of your robot all digitally. You'll never need to handle a physical teach pendant. 
the part we'll be programming is an automotive sheet metal trunk lid with its fixture. We have an Atos 5 700 measuring volume inside a 6130 scan box cell. To begin, uh, we're going to hide the walls of our scan box to aid our line of sight. And even though they're hidden, they're still present in the background behind the scenes. Now, we want to pull in the CAD for the fixture and the CAD of the trunk lid. So we'll highlight both of them and then drag and drop them in. We select clipboard and the clipboard is a staging ground for when you have to import multiple elements at the same time. So I expand my clipboard, click on my fixture and we're going to drag it up and add it as a fixture. Next, I'm going to click on my CAD, drag it up and add it as a new part and I will click OK. We'll call this trunklet. So we're going to choose a scanning template, but the general workflow of the workspace is ordered left from right. And the first button is the scanning template. You want to choose a template based on the part you have. Uh, there are predefined parameters for data acquisition and smart teaching that are recommended depending on the type of part you have. In this case, it is sheet metal, so I will select sheet metal and click OK. Now, I want to position my fixture and trunk lid to where they sit in reality. So I go to my second button and create a measuring setup. I choose an appropriate rotation table and then I can manipulate my part to get it close to where it sits in reality. I wrote it, rotate it around with the trihedron handles and allows full six degrees of freedom of control. And to get a close fit, I click on automatic transformation to level it out. And then we can rotate it. I'm going to slide it back. On the table, there are holes that are representative of a physical plate that you can use to position your part repeatedly on your rotation table. So I have it set up and we can create and close my measuring setup. Next, I want to generate scanning positions. I'm going to utilize the Smart Teach function inside the VMR. Smart Teach is a hands-off programming tool that generates scanning positions based on your CAD fixture and your entire inspection plan. So I'll go up to my teaching, click on Smart Teach, and I'm going to choose scanning with pre-measured reference points. These pre-measured reference points can come from either a manual tri-top or with the plus box add-on for the scan box cell. So Smart Teach automatically generates positions based off the CAD surface. It does a rough scanning of your CAD and you can see the positions represented by the blue camera icons. If I want to generate additional positions based off inspection, say I go up and create some circles, uh, I can add a circle here, uh, create a circle there, and a third circle on the other side of the trunklet. Create and close. In the moment I apply a measuring principle, a gray value feature, because this is sheet metal, the Smart Teach will update and recalculate for these new inspection features and you can see it's generated these additional positions for the circles. If I wanted to manually add positions, I can click on the sensor and drag it by the measuring volume into the appropriate spot. Or I can shift left click on a position to orientate the sensor normal to the surface. And if I click on my eye teach, I can click on measurement and then add a scan. I can add a new measurement position. So a couple more times, Shift left click, add position, shift left click, add position. I'm able to generate manually all these scans. So I've added three and now I'm going to send it home. If I do have a measurement plan though, so all of my circles, edge points, and slotted holes, if I were to import my measurement plan, I can then apply measuring principles to this. So I'll let it import. And then I go over to my surface points. I apply intersection with mesh. I go to my curves, project curve on the actual, and my remaining features. These are sheet metal. They will be gray value features. And then I click OK. The software is going to automatically update, recalculate, and generate the new positions uh, for these inspections. It is also optimizing the pathway for the robot's movement, so you're always getting the quickest, shortest route between all the different scan positions. And now you can see it's generated all the additional positions. Down on the bottom, this is called our timeline. Down here, you can preview and get a time estimate for how long it's going to take to execute the scan series. In this case, three minutes. I can hit play, and you'll be able to see the robot moving digitally. 
you can speed it up say 200 percent 300 percent or even 400 percent and this allows you to visualize and understand the pathway that the robot is going to take to scan this part when it is done it always returns home to its home position there is a yellow bar on the timeline and that indicates that this pass pathway has not been validated in reality we have not executed this scan series with the real robot that would require us to initialize our sensor and run it through the different measurement positions at a reduced speed and once it's validated it's able to run at full speed and that yellow goes away let's take a look at a validated scan box project now so same setup but without the yellow bar on the timeline this part has been validated in reality it does have inspection and report pages in our explorer and these will be updated and recalculated when we acquire new scan data and it's processed so if I wanted to create a template from this that I can use later I can go up to file create template from project and then I can create and let's call this web demo I hit OK and this creates a template and this is how you program a part using the virtual measuring room these templates can all be created without connect being connected to an actual scan box this is what we call offline programming so let's move on to the next side and take a look at how real scanbox executes with a VMR so we start the series using the VMR the physical robot starts moving along with the virtual measuring room inside our software you don't have to press anything on the robot they just they start moving when you start executing so they're moving together at the same time and it is following the pathway that we generated earlier with a smart teach it goes through all the scanning positions and all the intermediate positions to get to the scanning positions and you can see how quick each scan is I mean at fast as two tenths of a second uh, second at most and how quickly the robot is able to move through the scanning positions and the scan program times both movements of the robot in the rotation table where they are arriving at the same exact time so a little bit more about the scan boxes if you look at the wall you'll see there's a calibration panel mounted on there and those of you that are familiar with our manual systems calibration process uh, will appreciate the automation the scan box has a calibration routine recorded and is able to execute it if it ever detects the sensor needs to be recalibrated it takes about 30 seconds in a scan box versus about five minutes manually it is an adjustable setup so you can utilize the 6130 with the ATOS 5 with different sets of lenses and measuring volumes depending on your part size and need. The 6130 also has a thermometer connected so it's able to detect large temperature changes of the ambient air. And all the scan boxes do come equipped with several safety features that will fault the robot if they are ever triggered. The 6130 has a light curtain, which you can see in the video, that will trigger if it's ever crossed and unseen on the floor are two sets of floor scanners once you are done scanning you can remove your part and get it set up for the next run so let's say we wanted to take this further and remove the need to know so much about the software this is where kiosk mode comes in i'll wait for the sensor to get back to its home position and i'll move on to kiosk mode Kiosk mode is an app like addition to the scan box that reduces the user interface to a simple and easy to work with set of buttons. Kiosk can also be operated via touchscreen and it limits the user to a streamlined set of functions of the automation ATO cell. And this just allows any shop floor guy to press a few buttons and to be able to run the scan box. So let's take a look at how it works. So you place your part into the scan box and then move over to the touch screen. You select your user and then you have to define your serial number. So 111 or whatever your part is. And then you have to choose the correct template. We're going to choose web demo and it loads up the project. You can opt for an RFID reader or a barcode scanner to make the template selection automatic and to minimize user error even further. So once it loads up, we go over and we press start to begin the template. Now this begins the same program that we saw earlier and it's going to move through all the same positions and acquire the same data. 
all the processing part of it though so the polygonize the recalculations the all the data acquisition and updating the report pages this all gets taken care of in kiosk mode so the user never really has to dive deep into the software and we've already kind of seen the scanning so we're going to jump ahead to the end result which is the report pages that are displayed on the kiosk mode the user can go through the report pages, see the results, and then choose whether it passes or fails. It'll then save the project and export the report pages. And that's the bulk of kiosk mode. Uh, you can see how simple and easy it is to simplify the user experience and make it so anyone can operate a scan box. That concludes my live portion of the webinar. I'm going to hand it back to Staten. Thank you guys for all your attention. Um, moving on to this next section, so we have ATOS 3D scanners and automation compatibility. This isn't one that I'm going to spend a lot of time going through. Um, just in brevity, you can download this and take a look. There are multiple scanners and there are multiple scan boxes, so there's a lot of different configurations. Some scanners play with some scan boxes, some don't. There's a, there's a few different reasons for that, and we can get into that, like I said, at a, at a later time. Or give me a call, give one of the other sales reps a call or engineers, and we can happily kind of clear it up. Or if you have an application question, and you want to know which system is going to be right for you based off of these configurations, we can work with that one as well. So why the quality of your 3D measurement solution matters. This is kind of breaking into the summary. So we want to have the ability to solve immediate quality issues quickly. Lean manufacturing principles, we're eliminating the unnecessary repetitive processes, rework and iterations. Process optimization, we can improve our cycle times, productivity and capacity. Cost avoidance also. Improve product quality. All that yields faster time to market, increased profits, and improved competitive advantage. So in summary, we've looked at everything about what is automation on our side? What are the benefits? We've reviewed you know, our automated 3D measurement technology types that we offer and the advantages of our commercial off-the-shelf solutions. And again, we can do other sales for you. We do have a fantastic automation and engineering team. We've discussed how companies are automating their processes and demonstrated automated scanning VMR workspace and kiosk mode and how the automation solutions we can provide will benefit your manufacturing process. Industry 4.0 is gonna to continue to grow, so it's important for all of us to grow with it. Um, it's gonna help make smart machines smarter, factories more efficient, and processes less wasteful. Production minds will become more flexible and productivity will become higher. Choosing the right technology is critical, and automated 3D measurement solutions allow companies like yours to receive data instantly and respond in real time to any issues. There's more competition than ever out there. I mean, that's no secret, especially with the times right now. So making the right decision for the right quality equipment is really crucial. And hopefully we've been able to help you steer you in the right direction on our side. Again, these are the ATOS software feature highlights. I'm not going to go through these bullet by bullet. Please check in with the first video that we made. Um, Brandon and Dane walked through a lot of these. But if you do have any other questions that they don't follow up or I didn't hit, by all means, reach out to us. We'd love to chat. We do also have the free uh, so inspection software Sony mentioned at the very beginning of this presentation. If you do have the free version and you're interested in the full version, you don't have to buy a license immediately. What you can do in the top tab of your free version, you can request a pro license. Once you request that, you'll be sent a context file and you'll have 30 days of the free software. Best thing that I suggest to customers up here or potential customers, download it, get the free version, give us a call, and we'll walk you through either a WebEx or a web demo on some of your parts to kind of get a feel and see if it's right for you.